put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Soldier Movie Review, yes, VHS, soak it in, kids. In the future, soldiers will be indoctrinated from birth. In fact, the first generation presented here are chosen as, as infants. And we don't really see any choosing parameters or anything, they're just picked up from you know, the, the maternity ward. So I like to think that they're chosen by like pitch and duration of cry. They are indoctrinated from birth to only be soldiers, basically. Obey orders, kill without mercy, and they also learn how to make Christmas trees out of these little puzzle block things. Yeah, and even after having had a long and successful career, Kurt Russell's Todd is, he becomes obsolete when a new generation who are not only indoctrinated from birth, but also genetically enhanced before birth, pr presumably, and they, they're, they're better from a technical perspective. Ex perspective. Actually, one of the tests, thankfully not the only one, but one of them does involve how fast one can climb a chain and then stay up there. Which, oh, Anderson, you really think you're being unique, but you're really just being goofy. And the and and yes, the that brings up some compelling questions and, and themes. What becomes of career soldiers, warriors, when they are no longer useful? Some of them have to star in Paul W. Anderson movies. And the, yeah, this whole thing of have, having only been trained for military and then discarded when no longer useful, being, basically the, the soldiers here are just objects for corporations to discard. Now, Todd lands on a garbage planet. He's, he's actually set there as garbage, and it turns out there are people living on it, and he joins their society. And then is, of course, can he actually reintegrate, or actually integrate, plain and simple, because he never integrated in the first place in any kind of society. Excuse me, and obviously it, it goes into. Excuse me, can the can man's soul and spirit truly be crushed, or can it be regained by regained by human interaction? And yeah, these are some very interesting ideas, and. Yeah, in a better movie, it would be really compelling. Part of the, there are many, many problems here, but one of them is that the, while this is good, theoretically good drama, it gets pretty sappy and also just hard to, hard to buy. Like the, the 
amount of time spent here that moves towards bringing him back into society does not all seem like it would be enough for the yeah because we, when we first meet he literally I don't think that as far as I can tell it's not even his training but he kills civilians like indiscriminately the first time I don't know if it's supposed to be funny in like this sort of yeah actually I bet it is because Paul Lewis Anderson would make something funny that's then also supposed to be like dark and, and poignant. But yeah, the first time we see him, his predilection towards killing civilians, it's literally that he is, he's training, it's at a shooting range. And literally, the, the dummy comes up that's like, you know, a mother carrying a child or something, and he just blows that thing. Just with bullets, he completely tears it apart. You know, Ed 209 in one of the first scenes of Robocop style. And, yeah, it's it's kind of sort of play for laughs, and then, yeah, in the long run, it's, you know... The, the threat of it is supposed to be like a source of tension, but, but yeah. This, this is essentially a drama with a couple of action scenes. And such a thing can work. Leon slash the professional, yeah, does really, really well at that. But Paul Lewis Anderson is not, is not Luc Besson. And, yeah, the, the, we, we get too little action. There's, at least for a Paul W. Sanderson movie, there's far too little action. It's actually fairly boring. And, again, if, if it was just a good drama, it would be perfectly fine. But, yeah, this is Paul trying his hand at drama. And... He's he's about as bad as dr at drama as he is at action or science fiction. You know, he's basically a jackass of all trades, a master of none. Now, this was thankfully back when he was making. You know, this was before he went completely off the deep end and just made utter gloriously nonsensical. <laughs> yeah. This was back when what he made was just average at best. You know, this was... Uh, I think he made Mortal Kombat, and I think this is also after Event Horizon, and I am getting to Event Horizon. And this was... The, the script here was done by the same man, David Webb Peoples, I think, as that of Blade Runner, which is, this is sort of a, it sort of takes place in the same universe. <sighs> yeah, that's a scary thought. And he also wrote 12 Monkeys, Unforgiven. I haven't really seen the rest of the movies he's written, but it seems to be almost all good stuff. Now, yes, as with this being sort of in the same universe, as Blade Runner. Of course, Paul approaches the, you know, as, as he always does when he approaches a phenomenal film which represents just the, the absolute peak of a masterful director's body of work. You know, the... the respect for it is non-existent. And I really, you know, now that he's also made, you know, Pompeii, which is, you know, basically, yeah, in, in part, Gladiator, the man will just not leave Ridley Scott's movies alone. This is like, you know, that, that deranged fan, you know, and that kind of person, if he got, like, 
a budget and a camera. Now, this is actually only 87 minutes long, not kind of the end credits, but it feels a good half hour longer, which might explain why it's so short. And this was, I'm, I'm not sure if this is actually like directly related to the Harlan, Harlan Ellison episode of The Outer Limits of the same name, but I saw somewhere online where the, the two were compared, and I figured, yeah, I rather like the, the work Harlan's, Harlan Ellison has written, and I like that episode already. So, yeah, watched it, and certainly does go into some of the themes, theme themes, same themes. Although with with this not taking place in the sixties, you know you don't have characters bonding over smoking, and then in some cases it's good that the the two are apart because the Outer Limits episode has telepathic cats. <laughs> yes. Now the this has been called sort of a a ripoff of Universal Soldier and Terminator 1 and 2. I don't agree. It, it does have some of the same themes with, yeah, you know, no longer wanting to fight and humanity emerging from the, you know, from, yeah, from, from the soul-crushing war kind of thing. But yeah, they're they're really not quite the same, and the one thing that's actually kind of a problem here is that unlike those three movies, this is much more of a personal, small small scale story, and it doesn't really lend itself to big action. So the the plot has to get really nonsensical. It's a Paul Douglas Anderson movie, in order to fit in some some action scenes. Actually, something that I don't even something that didn't even have to be nonsensical is that the the bad guys are approaching the guard. This is not a spoiler. From early on, they're approaching the garbage planet. And only in, like, it's the third act do they arrive. And it's supposed to be that, you know, time passes, like maybe months or something. And it's like, why did it take them so long to get there? Did, did they stop for burgers along the way? <laughs> and this would have been... If they had just like edited it or written in some explanation, speaking of explanations, I'm not 100% certain why was they went there or why they were so casual. But again, not a spoiler said very early on, they don't really mind the idea of there being people there that they might have to kill. So yeah. Now, the, the acting, I don't want to say it's bad, but it kind of is. It's not really, I'd say Kurt Russell does quite well. I mean, we, it's, it's nice that they actually did go for this, you know, rare, more or less mute protagonist. And... Yeah, they, they they generally do not give Russell very many lines, so he has to act with also without being able to move too much because he's very controlled. So it's 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 face, it's especially eyes, and he does pretty well. And it's, I mean, it's not 
Arnold Schwarzenegger in you know Terminator One and Two, but it's still pretty good. Now, the I I did get this from the trivia section of IMDb, but I did watch the trailer to confirm there is indeed a space battle with like dozens of ships flying around, you know, around a, a planet. And this is not in film, not in the film, nor could it really be, except maybe as a flashback. And yes, to, to quote directly from the, the IMDb trivia page, it was probably a marketing ploy. Yeah. Now, the... This does also go some into PTSD and does that decently enough. Now, it, the, the effects are pretty good, and the set design is also very nice for just sheer production values. This is fairly well done. Now, the action... Yeah, I going back to this early point in his career, I, I can now confirm the man does not know how to direct action. It is just, yeah, he's, he still hasn't learned it. If, if, you know, to anyone who's watching this review and if you're new to Paul Davis, he still hasn't learned it. One of the big problems here is that a lot of the shots are too tight, and then it cuts very quickly. So you kind of get lost in, you know, what exactly is happening. And there are there are cuts left in. I have no idea how how you even managed to do this, if, even by accident. There are cuts left in with the view obscured, so we can't see what's going on. Like we're yeah, literally something goes straight up in front of the lens, more or less covering it, and we can't see what is happening for, for that little bit, at least. And so there actually is some good editing in this. The, a good example is the, the entire opening bit with all this, the, the training, and it, it speeds through Todd's life, basically. And yeah, it's well edited from start to finish. Now, the I suppose that brings me nicely enough into there are at, at times, when when Paul realizes the the drama is just absolutely utterly uninteresting, he, I mean, he's no good at develop, you know giving us characters that we can really get into. So, yeah, I mean, I literally just got done watching the movie again. I've watched it at least a couple times before. And I'm struggling to remember character traits about, yeah, pr pretty much anyone. And I mean, yeah, with with the whole, you know, soldier trying to regain his humanity kind of thing, yeah, they could have done a lot more with it. It's kind of just a lot of him, you know, seeming threatening and then you know, he maybe helps out some because of his physical skills and the like, but they don't really go any deeper than that. And yeah, I, I appreciate that to an extent it's difficult without, you know, whilst maintaining that Russell doesn't speak too much. And certainly they do give him some deeper lines, but yeah, it's the, it's it's a bit thin, ultimately, flat. Now the yes, yeah, so every so often in in the making of this, he realized this is not very interesting, and he threw in 
something to make, you know, to, to wake up the audience, essentially. And, yeah, these are often pretty out of place. Now, it's also fairly cheesy. Gary Busey is in this, and, like, his character trait <laughs> is that he he uses these sayings and like each time he he says one it's like what do you mean I'm, I'm confused or I've never heard of this and it's like have you really never heard of this phrase like the first one again not a spoiler used early on is if it ain't broke don't fix it and yeah the, the other character is like what does that mean and who doesn't know that phrase I guess in the future they don't keep up on useful phrases like that. Now, I think that might more or less cover it. The yes, this this does of course have his. I have Paul Douglas Anderson's usual weaknesses of the trademarks. His usual trademark weaknesses where, actually I think there wasn't really any claustrophobia in this, but pretty much everything else. You've got some hidden traps, you've got the overuse of slow-mo, which Apropos or or not is also overused in you know his his horror work. There's not an awful lot of wire work in this one, but it was early in his career, so we'll let that one slide. And there is some, and really didn't need to be there. There is too little build up to a big outcome, and a lot of build up to an anticlimax. And I think that pretty well covers it. I haven't really seen Jason Scott Lee, who's like the main of the new the new generation of soldiers. Haven't seen him in a lot. He's he's not bad. He, he's not given an awful lot to work with. It's mainly just look sinister and be, you know single-minded, disciplined soldier, he does that well. You know, he's, yeah, he's he's pretty cool. And that's, you know, again, I mean, Russell and Jason Scott Lee are pretty cool, and there are some, you know, nice, badass moments, but overall the action is not very good. There are... There are several really dumb gags. Like there's this, there's a bit where a character fires a weapon not at the enemy for some reason, not at the enemy, but at something else, which then you know falls apart and and kills. Then you know, and it's a one-on-one, -on -one, so it's not like you know using one you know, round to take out several... Nope. There's there's no reason given for why it couldn't just be... Yeah. Now... I do believe that covers it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.